Hi guys, so welcome back to part 2, which is the build of the Russian T-3476. So just going to run through cutting uh, some of the pieces off and assembling the tank. I don't think it needs a lot of commentary, um, so I won't. Except where I've had a couple of revelations along the way. As I promised, I'll show all the mistakes that I make. Hopefully that will help other people who are just getting into it or just getting back into it. Yeah, when removing the pieces from the sprue and cleaning up the little joins, gently filing, that sort of stuff, I find it always comfortable in the knowledge that uh, the paint covers a multitude of sins, but try and get it as good as I can when I'm putting it all together. Always good to uh, try and hold the small pieces down when you're cleaning them up because uh, they have a tendency to fly all over the place if you're just uh, using your finger. Finger. The parts did fit together very nicely, I didn't have any real dramas there at all, and I always try and use the least amount of glue, although that doesn't always work sometimes, a little bit too much comes out, but I try and keep it clean as I can, so it doesn't show up once you've done the painting, you can always get the excess off very carefully. So those of you who have watched the previous episode would realise I had no idea what this piece was, so it was a bit of a revelation to me to discover it was the axle. And again, at this precise moment in time, I still had some belief that it might have been something to do with the fact that it was a, a throwback from the motorised version, but uh, obviously not.
another issue here was these gaps above the drives. And uh, I, again, assume that it might have had something to do with the motorised version, but I might be really barking up the wrong tree here. But I'm pretty sure that uh, they didn't have tanks running around with great big holes in the, in the hull. And there's a couple of other little ones on the side. So needed to uh, fix that up. Used a little bit of the plastic card from the Russian street, actually, from the house. Cut that to size and glued it on the back. And then just to fill up some of the depth, cut a couple of little pieces to fit in there in preparation for being able to put a little bit of uh, filler in there. in there. I wasn't that worried about getting it perfectly even and level given that it'll be hidden behind the tracks and the weathering process as well so just uh, wanted to take that gap away more than anything. Initially I didn't put this first box close enough to the aerial mount, so when I went to put on the fuel tanks that sit behind them, they didn't fit, so I noticed I had to move it forward when I realised that. I just follow the uh, box art and the instructions in terms of where uh, a lot of this stuff can be placed, and in addition to that, also look at uh, lots of photos, actual photos of tanks, and there seemed to be a great deal of variation in what could and couldn't be placed on the vehicle and where it could or couldn't be, pl where it could or couldn't be placed. The um, tow chain is a straight solid piece and this was my first experience with having to bend it to fit the contours of the tank and uh, let's just say it wasn't a great success. I think I can hide the outcome behind the logs and, and the toolbox but um, I won't give a commentary, you'll see for yourself. The second attempt, which I didn't film because I really had to concentrate on getting it right, came out a little bit better, but as you can see, that's not fantastic. I don't love the plastic logs that come with the kit, and as I was putting them together and looking at how all the sewage might fit, I grew to like them even less, so... I think I'll replace those with some actual small, very small branches from the garden. Just need to find the right ones with good texture and that'll appear in the, in the final build. I also quite deliberately added some small pieces of battle damage, some ricochets from shells and some bullet marks and they should look much nicer once the uh, painting's been done.
render. So again, I'm deliberately not attaching anything to the right hand side of the turret because that's where the name of the tank will go, the fighting girlfriend. And it looks like it might take up a bit of space, so I want to get that on first and see if there's any sensible way of putting anything else on. I don't think there was anything else on from the pictures that I have of the actual tank, so I think I'll leave it pretty much. exactly the same. So here's my first attempt at airbrushing. I went out and bought an airbrush. I was at the point where I absolutely needed one to keep going any further and a very makeshift spray booth out of the box that the airbrush came in. Those experienced airbrushes watching will see that uh, there's uh, a lot of improvement possible for me here. That right hand side was the first side I did, just about blew it out of the booth. I had the PSI up way too high and about five litres of paint. Well that might be an exaggeration but a lot of paint hit it all at, uh, in a big hurry. Slowly improving with practice, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how that improvement continues. But it's a fantastic tool, I really love it, and I think it's going to make things a lot easier in the future. future. And my last revelation for the build was the um, realisation discovery of what uh, this metal screw and nut actually does. And it's a, a mechanism for releasing the tension uh, on the on the wheels so that you can adjust the track accordingly. So all my theories about the old version of the motorised version uh, are probably not correct other than the fact that there's definitely spaces for batteries in there. And so I think I'm sort of on track but uh, perhaps not. So there's the uh, largely finished model with uh, the primer coat sprayed on. And look, all in all, I'm, I think I'm really happy with the uh, with the kit. I'm not as happy with my build, but uh, I'm optimistic that I can only improve. And I think this will fit really nicely into the into the overall into the into the overall diorama. So thanks for watching, guys. And uh, and part three will be the finishing of this with uh, me learning how to use the airbrush even more and doing the, the painting and putting the uh, decals.